Cornetto. Did you know that in the United States, we see more tornadoes than any other country? Yes! Every state in the United States has seen that big tornado. That includes Alaska, which is kind of surprising. That includes Hawaii, and that includes Pennsylvania. Does anybody know why we see so many tornadoes? What do you think? That's all right. I the Orange. In the Orange. Why do we see so many tornadoes? Taking your pencil for a second. Okay, hold that thought. We'll come back to you. Right here. The red. That's a part of it. Let's try in the back in the white. There. Yep. I'm going to build it out so I can hear you. Okay, anybody else? Right back there. Yep. You guys white? Right here. 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 Right and we see a lot of cold air, and that hot air and cold air mixes together. So we have the United States, which is located right here. And then down in the south, we have the Gulf of Mexico. In the Gulf of Mexico, very warm water. That water can sometimes get up to 90 degrees, like your bathtub water. And the atmosphere above that, the air mass, is very warm and moist. So you have the United States, very warm, moist air down here. And then we have cold and dry air to our north in a country called what? What's that country? The country north of America, what's it called? Canada! The country north of the United States, what's it called? Canada! What's it called? Canada! Thank you. Oh, Canada, my home and native land. You can stop any time. Land. United States here. We have Gulf of Mexico, warm and moist air here. We have Canada up here, cold and dry air. So cold and dry air here, warm and moist here. Is that the same or different? Same. Different. So you have those two different air masses meeting over the United States. And when that happens, you get a lot of thunderstorms, you get hail, you get lightning, you get bad storms. But you need one more thing if you're going to get tornadoes. And that's something called shear. And that's when you have winds that change direction with height. The winds start like this, and as they go higher, they spin around. And that turns it into something that looks like this. What does this look like? Can everybody do that? What's that? A tornado. Absolutely. And on one day, I saw more tornadoes than I have ever seen. I saw 11 tornadoes in one afternoon. And shockingly, seven of those tornadoes were on the ground all at the same time. This happened in Virginia. Would you guys like to see what happened on that day? And at that point it was in my backyard and I just grabbed onto the door and just glass exploding and the next thing I knew I came out and half my house was gone. The path was complete and black. All of a sudden I saw someone swore in the red so I said, say it's not gonna hit the ground. There's a street over here that has four houses in a row. 
Okay, I want you to remember her, and also the guy in the white t-shirt you saw before. There's a mansion that seems something like this right here in Virginia. I mean, you heard about it all over, everywhere. You never would think it would come straight to home. No, we're hearing that nobody's seriously injured, nobody's dead. I can't believe it. Okay, now this happened in Virginia. So this was an EF4 tornado. We've never had a tornado this strong or even have that strong up here in Pennsylvania. But when this tornado went through, we had, I saw the two people I told you about, there was the guy in the white t-shirt, do you remember him? He was saying something along the lines as I looked out my window and all I saw was dark. What was he, he was talking about was he was looking out his car window and the dark he saw was the tornado about to hit him. Is a car a good place to be when a tornado goes through? No! No, absolutely not. You don't want to be in a car, you don't want to be in a manufactured home if a tornado is coming through or a mobile home, okay? His car was picked up by the tornado and it spun in the air, a hundred feet in the air spinning around and it landed. Now luckily for him, it landed on his wheels and he was okay. He ended the hospital and got some stitches, but he was okay. If that car had turned over on its top and landed, it would have been a much worse outcome for him, okay? So you never want to be in a car when a tornado was coming through. Now, do you remember the lady in the blue fleece jacket? Yeah. Okay, this one's even more for the teachers and the kids. Her and her husband, for the first time ever, decided to go on a vacation without the kids. And they chose to go to a place called Hawaii. Does everybody know where Hawaii is? Yeah. Okay, all the way up the Pacific Ocean. So husband, wife out in Hawaii. This is happening in Virginia. So grandma is home watching the one child who was home from school, and she was in kindergarten. So the mom was describing how the grandmother who had been watching TV, we've been on you know, straight for a couple of hours, watching these tornadoes come through. And she looked out her front door and she saw the tornado coming right down her street. So she grabbed the five-year-old granddaughter and she said, whatever you do, you hold on with everything you're worth and you don't let go, okay? Now their house was one of the houses that was completely wiped away when the tornado came through, okay? But they knew where to go. They knew where their tornado safe place was, and they went down there into the basement, and they were absolutely 100% A-okay, all right? Now, if you know where to go when a tornado comes through, you're gonna be 100% okay. We're gonna talk about that in a little bit. But first, I wanna finish up this. We had those seven tornadoes that all touched down at the same time, which uh, has to be some kind of record. And this is what I really wanted to show you. Can everybody read the yellow here? What's that say? Okay, whose house am I talking about? Your house. Ah, right. So this is what we call velocity on a radar. The green indicates winds that are going that way. The red indicates winds that are going this way. And if you have a blue dot, that means winds are circling around, okay? So if you've got winds going this way, and winds going this way, and winds going this way, what do you have? Tornado. You've got one of two things. You have either a tornado, or you have a funnel cloud in the air. The ra radar can't distinguish between whether that circulation is on the ground or if it is up in the air. We have brand new radars now that can, but back then you could not, okay? This is only a few years ago. Um, so that was my house there, and it was going in this direction. It's the only time I've ever been on TV and actually had a tornado going right over my house when my family was at home. And I think my kids are about one and four years old at this time when this happened. Luckily for my house, it went right over the house, and it touched down about a half mile behind my house in the neighborhood. And unfortunately, they had some damage, but it's the only time I've ever been on air and had a tornado go right over my house and have to talk about a tornado going right through my neighborhood. But we lucked out. Now, can we get tornadoes in Pennsylvania? Yes, we can. As a matter of fact, probably more than you think. In western Pennsylvania, in and around Pittsburgh, since 2011, it's 2013 now. We have had five tornadoes touch down, okay? Newcastle, this last summer in July, we had an EF1 tornado touchdown. In 2012 in September, we had two brief tornado touchdowns, one in 84, one in West Mifflin. There was one in the leg of the ear that was an EF1. That was off and on on the ground for eight miles. And that one actually hit a house, and the house on the top of the roof, it went down to the second floor, second floor went down to the first floor, and guess what? Mom and dad and two kids were home. But guess what? 
They knew the tornado was coming. Where do you think they went? Basement. They went to their tornado safe place. They were in the basement when that happened. Everything collapsed on the house except for the basement. Guess what? 100% A-OK. -okay. You're absolutely right. And then we had the Hemphill Township tornado that happened in March 2011. That's one of the stronger ones we've ever had around here. That was an EF2, and that did quite a bit of damage out there in Hemphill. Would you guys like to see what happened on that day? Yeah. Okay. That was the tornado looking down Highway 30 from a few miles away. And what survey the damage along the tornado path. Last night, we tracked the tornado with my own point radar. And one of the biggest indicators that we had a tornado on the ground was this big echo that we saw on my pinpoint Doppler radar. That appeared at 445. Today it became official. That hook echo was a tornado, and that tornado hit Hempfield Township. It just sound like a train wreck, like they always said. I never, you know, believed that until I heard it myself. Sky 4 followed the path of the storm in the Fort Allen neighborhood. Littered with debris, roofs torn off, trees ripped out of the ground, some buildings completely destroyed. Black clouds, the black clouds got sucked down and then they come up and just crisscross and everything started spinning. That spinning was confirmed today by the National Weather Service as a tornado. And not a weak tornado, an EF2 on the Fujita scale with winds of 120 miles per hour. We saw the hump come down near the ground. At its peak, the base of the tornado was 300 yards wide. The tornado randomly hopped around its path, hitting and missing homes and businesses for six to seven miles. Yeah, I was fortunate. It, it missed us. Two blocks away, and there was homes ripped in half. The damage, substantial. The emotional toll, shocking. But the human toll, fortunately, untouched. Nobody got hurt. It's all the cloud. God was watching over, because nobody got hurt. And again, the moral of the story, nobody got hurt. Again, because people knew where their tornado safe place was. Now, we talked about going down to the basement. Is there anything else you want to avoid? What do you think? Underground house. That'd be awesome if you had time. What do you think? Bathtub, bathroom. That's an awesome choice. Going to a small room is good. Where, what, what do you want to avoid in your house? Windows. Those are the three things. So number one, you're going to go to the lowest level of your house. That's the basement. Okay? How many people here have basements? Okay? Just about everybody. Okay. If you don't have a basement, it's the ground level. So go to the basement. Number two, you're going to stay away from the outside windows, okay? And the reason you do that is if you have winds of 100 miles per hour, if the winds hit you 100 miles per hour, it might knock you down. It's probably not going to hurt you that bad. But what will hurt you if glass is flying around 100 miles per hour? Do you want to be around that? No, not at all. Rick's flying around 100 miles per hour, you definitely don't want to be around that. If you go down to your basement, you want to go to a small room like a closet or a bathroom or under the stairs. Those are all great choices. If you could do me a favor, if you could ask your parents tonight, where is our tornado safe place? Because we've definitely had tornadoes around here before. You should definitely know where you need to go if you have a tornado that's coming down your street. And you kids in the back there, you're getting old enough to where you're babysitting. So you could be home with one of these young guys up front. And you definitely need to know where to go if a tornado's coming down your street because you could be the one in charge. Okay? All right. Now, with more on tornadoes and what can happen when things fly around, please put your hands together for fantastic that.